Good afternoon. Our study today comes from the King James 1611 Bible. Now on the Facebook Live, you won't be able to see what's on the screen. But I got it up on the screen where you can read the Bible. I'm not going with man's opinions. I'm not going with my opinions. We're going to go with what the Bible says. And if you don't like it, it's not Stiley Hayward. It's the Bible and God that you get the problem with. And the errors of the ways that people keep saying what we're going to talk about doesn't make it correct. Psalms 122 verse 1, and you can follow along with the video. I'm sorry, on, on YouTube we can't do much. But the Song of Degrees of David. Now this is David. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now when you do the search here that you see, this is the only time that you see glad house and Lord. You don't see it anywhere else. Let me get rid of that real quick. Now, David is under the law. David does not have the spectacular building. That comes after Solomon. David has tents. So when he says, I want to go to the house of the Lord, he's talking about a tent. He's not talking about a building, and he's talking about a time under the law in the Old Testament. And it's funny, these churches say, well, we're not under the law, we're not under the law. But then they go quoting from the law. As if we can erase what the Bible says because we like what the Bible says. We're going to nitpick out of the Bible and we're going to put it on samplers and we're going to hang it on the wall. Now let's look at <clears throat> Psalms 122. A song of degrees of David. Under the law, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It's a tent. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Not O city in America. Any city in a Gentile nation. Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. The house of the Lord that's in Jerusalem. Which that house of the Lord ain't there today. You got the dumb of the rock. Jerusalem is built as a city that's compact together. <coughs> and forgive me if I start coughing, but our neighbor got a barbecue going and bothering my throat. Whether the tribes to go up, we're not under the tribes. We don't call ourselves tribes. And then, you know, some people go run over to, 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 the, to the book of James or the epistle of James. You know, that's for the church. To the twelve tribes scattered aboard. You're not reading the con. Oh, well, I was glad when they said, let us go in the house of the Lord. And then you finish the rest of the chapter, Jerusalem and the tribes. The tribes of the Lord. The tribes of the Lord are the twelve tribes of, of Jacob. Unto the testimony of Israel. Israel. J Jerusalem. David. Law. To give thanks unto the name of the Lord. Well, there's a lot of... They go into a church building today and they give thanks to the church building. To the church people. Or to the great pastor they got in their church. For there are set thrones of judgment. The thrones of the house of David. Where are their thrones of judgment set in the church building? Oh, they judge the people with, with uh, their big mouths and gossip. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. You think many churches do that? They want the peace in America. They shall prosper 
that love thee. Priest within thy walls. That's going to happen in a millennium. That's Jesus Christ. And prosperity within thy palaces. That ain't today. For my brethren, David speaking, David's brethren are the Jews. And companion sakes, I will now say, peace be within me. David's going to say that when he is the prince and Jesus Christ is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So, I was glad when they said, let's go into the house of the Lord. You're under the law. You're talking about Jerusalem. You're talking about the tribes. And you'll say, oh, we're not under the law. And then you'll turn around and say, replacement theology is wrong teaching. And yet, friend, when you call your church building the house of the Lord, you are doing the same thing that replacement theology does. You're taking the place of Israel. By lying and being hypocrite. We're not under the law, but we're going to run to the law. For, let us be glad and, and be in the house of the Lord. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek thy good. How are you going to seek the good today in the church house? All are welcome. Bring in the pagan Esther. Bring in the birthday of Tammuz. Bring in the celebration of dead people. Bring in the, the, the celebration of bingo. Bring in the celebration of life. Bring in the entertainment of the VBSs so we can entertain the children with five minutes of Bible and ten minutes of food, fifteen minutes of playground, twenty minutes of arts and crafts, and 15 minutes of, of taking attendance and nonsense. You know, when you're talking about the house of the Lord, talk about the temple, not everybody was invited. Not everybody was welcome. There was a king that went into the holy place to offer incense, and he came out as a leopard defiled. Not everybody went into that temple. You had to be of the Levites a priest. What are you trying to set up? Oh, welcome to the house of the Lord. Isn't we in the house of the Lord today? What kind of program are you trying to set up? Because in the house of the law, under the law, only certain people could go into that building. And yet some churches, their buildings have out and say, all are welcome. Not the temple. Not the temple. Not all are welcome. Man, they cast Paul out, accusing Paul of bringing Gentiles in, which he did not. And then in the temple, you have the holy place. And you have the most holy place, where only the high priest went once a year, twice, for himself, his sins, and the sins of the people. And I know some preachers, I can give their name, and their office is the most holy place. I even had a preacher one time when I was trying to rebuke him. Touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm. Uh, that's Old Testament and that ain't you. What kind of service are you setting up when you've got a holy place? And they'll say the holy sanctuary. And you got the prayer altar. Oh, you got a golden thing set up to burn incense. You got the table up there, but you got electric lights instead of a candlestick. Don't you see that the modern church buildings today are a replica of the Old Testament temple? So let's look at here. It's Jewish. Now, the house of the Lord. 234 times in the King James 1611 Bible. Of 213 verses. Zilch. In the New Testament. Zilch. You don't find the house of the Lord in the New Testament. But you sure find the house of the Lord. Some churches you'll go in. It is a joy to be in the house of the Lord. To, to, oh. Really? The temple didn't have a fire exit. 
I don't see anywhere in the Bible says anything about a prayer altar. And they'll say, well, there's nothing in there about the prayer altar. But, you know, you can't find the rapture in the Bible. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. And you want to look to a prayer altar, Paul met with a bunch of people on the beach and prayed with them. We'll move on. All right, so Exodus. Exodus. We're going to look at the first two times this shows up. Exodus 23. Exodus 23, verse 19. This is the first two times the house of the Lord shows up in the Bible. Ready? Let's take the context. The rule is, when the first time it shows up, it sets the stage. Stage. That's what some churches are calling there, where the, where the, where the, the uh, pulpit is. They call it the stage now. 23:19, the first of the first fruits of the land thou shalt bring unto the house of the Lord thy God. That's the first time it shows up. Be ready for the second time. Exodus 34. Exodus 34. Verse 26. The first... The first of the first fruits of the land thou shalt bring unto the house of the Lord thy God. It's the same thing as 23. This is the first and second time the house of the Lord shows up. Oh. It has to do with tithing and bringing offerings. Exodus 23, 19. Exodus 34, 26 is the first two times that this house of the Lord, the house of shows up in the Bible, and it has to do, under the law, after Exodus 20, it has to do with bringing offerings. Now shall we open our Bibles to Malachi, and open up the storehouses of heaven, how we should give to the church, and the pastor got up and said it with me, and I said, hey, that's under the law. After I asked him, pastor, are we under law, or are we under grace? Well, we're not under grace, we're not under law. I said, Malachi is under the law. How come when you read Malachi, you don't go reading the tithes and offerings, which we just did? See, Malachi isn't just giving money. It's giving the first fruits of the land. The tomatoes, the figs, the watermelon, everything that the, the Jews grew. And the first two places that this shows up has to do with offerings. Gee, I wonder why the church uses the house of the Lord. Deuteronomy. Have I asked anybody's opinion? Have I checked into what people are saying? Deuteronomy 23, 18. I really got to look at my handwriting. It's terrible. All right. Thou shalt not bring the, whole, the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for a vow. For even both these are abomination to the Lord thy God. So we got a house of the Lord. We're not to bring a hire of a whore and the price of a dog. Now let's check the cousin to the King James Bible. Let's check the Geneva Bible footnote. And then we'll check what Wesley has to say. Now, the Geneva Bible, as you can see on the video, Deuteronomy 23, 18, forbidding that any gain from evil things should be applied to the service of God. They have Micah 2, 7. John Wesley. The hire of whore. This is opposed to the practice of Gentiles who allowed both such persons and oblations they made out of their infamous gains. Some of them kept lewd women who prostituted themselves in temples to the honor of the false gods and offer part of their profit to them. Or the price of a dog, it seems to mean of a whoremonger or a sodomite. Such were called dogs, Revelation 22, 15. And it be not prob improbable they called here. So, the house of God 
You're not to bring any money into the house of God, take the collection of the money of any sin. Would your house of God, the church of God, would they say, hey, did that money come from gambling? We're not going to take that. Well, you know, Mr. Smith, you own a liquor store. Don't put your money into play. But Malachi says, you know, bring your tithe and offerings. When all are welcome into the church house, what is the money that's going into that plate? And if you're going to call it the house of the Lord, Deuteronomy 23, 18, under the law, because you can't find the house of the Lord in the New Testament, where is some of that money coming from? That goes into the church plates. If you're going to call yourself the house of the Lord, and all are welcome. I was in a church one time, and I was asked, my wife and my family were asked to bring this woman home. I said, sure. She wasn't feeling well. I said, we'll bring her home. And we went back to the next, you know, went to the next service, I forget, that night or the midweek service. And the pastor came up to me and he goes, well, I really want to thank you very much. And I, I should have told you, but that, you know, that woman was a prostitute. An openly known, unforgiving prostitute. I've seen that money, I've seen that woman put money in the plate. I'm not going, hey, listen, a prostitute can be saved. But her money doesn't belong in that plate. Joshua. Joshua chapter 6. We, we're doing the Bible, right? I want to make sure. This is the Bible. I'm reading from the King James 1611 Bible. I will not read from any other Bible. I am only King James. And they burnt the city with fire. Uh, this would be uh, Jericho. They burnt the city with fire and all that was therein. Only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. Here's offering to God again. Here's an offering. Something about the house of the Lord, it's also referenced in the Bible to offerings. Oh, I've been to some, I, there's a church right now, that they, they, they put their Facebook out there, and every Facebook message, you can give to our church, we want to thank you for watching, give to our church, and press the link below, and you can give to our church. Friend, I, I just told a friend, and showed them a picture today I found that goes all the way back to November 2010. It's a picture of me sitting at my desk, and it is the first picture, it is the first bean, 2010, November, when I began these Facebook ministries, I began the YouTube ministry. We had SermonNet back then before they started charging money. And not once have I ever charged or solicited money to anybody. For these messages. But the house of the Lord seems to be having doing things with offerings. I got the connection. Yes, I do. Judges 19. Judges 19. I'm trying to read my writing. I hope that's 18. Judges 19.18, he said, We are passing through Bethlehem, Judah, toward the side of Mount Ephraim, from whence I am. And I went to Bethlehem, Judah, but I am now going to the house of the Lord. You know where he's going? He's not going to the temple of gold, overlaid with gold. He's going to the tent. That David would look out his windows one day and say, you know, I deal in the house of, of cedar and the Lord's out there in a tent. You know, the closest thing we would have to it in American history of church history is the old-fashioned tent revivals. 
very rarely you're going to find a church today going to meet under a tent. Ew. A gross tent. Church history, they used to meet on, called tent revival, tent meetings. And many people were saved, and there was hellfire preaching, no air conditioning. Uh, 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. Chapter 1, verse 7. And as he did year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord. All right. Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord today? All right, only go three times a year. What? The males are only to go to the, to the temple, the house of the Lord, three times a year, uh, Passover, Feast of Tabernacles, and I forget what the other one was. Oh, they're not going to preach that in today's church, only come to the church three times a year. But that was a law. That's what we're talking about. That's the house of the Lord was something talking about offering, and you're only to go three times a year. Devote Catholics will go to their worship place twice a year. They're missing one day. I, again, I had a pastor tell me, you know, well, Easter and Christmas, they're the two celebrations of the church. Yeah, uh, you need another one. Because you only went to the house of the Lord three times a year, according to the law. And then they'll get, you know, where to meet on the first day of the week. That's when the Lord resurrected. That's when the apostles went. And we're welcome to the house of the Lord three times a year. But, 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 yeah, you see what happens when you go in the Bible and you pick one verse and you, you fountain yourself on one verse? Verse Kings. I'm reading from the Bible here, right? I just want to make sure. This is why I get kicked out of churches. This is why pastors say, get out of here. Solomon made an infirmity alliance with Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her to the city David until he had made an end of building his own house in the house of the Lord. Solomon made an alliance and a love affair in Egypt. And Egypt is type of the world. And there's the house of the Lord. Yeah, that's the church today. They are sleeping with the devil. They're committing adultery with the devil while Jesus is knocking on the door of the church on the outside of the door, not inside. Jesus Christ in the light of the seen church age is not inside. He's outside the church knocking. When God and Jesus Christ in the Noah's Ark was inside the Ark, come in. Jesus is at the light of the scene church outside saying, Anybody will open unto me, I will come in and sup with him. He's not in the church. Because the church has made an alliance with the world and Egypt's the type of the world. Plain and simple. 1 Kings 8. 1 Kings 8. 10 and 11, I hope. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place, that the cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. When was the last time the glory of the Lord, a cloud, filled the your church building. Now I'm not talking about a cloud from Paul Mall, Marlboro, and Cool. I'm talking about a cloud from the glory of God in your house of the Lord. Where is your cloud of glory? Where is your ushers outside your church door? Say, wait a minute, we can't go in. Why not? Because the Holy Spirit's in a cloud and it's just the presence of the Lord. We just can't come in. That's the house of the Lord. I've never known the, a church. 
I've been in churches where it's totally blank and dark and miserable. First Kings 9. I'm just running the scriptures. 9.15. And this is the reason of the levy which King Solomon raised, who built the house of the Lord. There's your congregational churches taxing the people so they can build their church building. That's what the congregational church did. That's what the Catholic Church does. In 1 Kings 9.15, Solomon taxed the people so they can build the house of God, and yet Christians, Baptists will say, Oh, no church and state! No church and state in the house of God! And Solomon taxed the people so he could build the church. As the Catholics, as the Congregationalists, what are you going to do with your house of God with that one? We're looking at the house of the Lord. By the way, doesn't this match the offerings and money? Everything attached with the house of the Lord seems to be attached with money and giving. Of course, your modern Baptist churches, welcome to the house of the Lord. You bring your money, bring your money, bring your money, bring your money. Ridiculous. First Kings six. First Kings chapter six. Again, the video you can see. Thirty-eight. Oh, this is a good one. Watch this one. First Kings six thirty-eight. In the eleventh year in the in the month of Bull, which is the eighth month, the house, this is the house of the Lord. Verse thirty seven. The house was finished throughout all parts of the earth according to the fashion of it. So he was seven years building it. The house of the Lord, verse 37. Seven years it took to build the house of the Lord. You ready? You ready? Chapter 7, verse 1 of 1 Kings. But Solomon was building his own house 13 years. Solomon took longer to build his house than it took to build the Lord's house. And I know pastors... The church house was built, and they were still building that, that verse. I got the guy's name. I can give you all, but I'm not going to. I can give you a place in Connecticut. The, pa the pastor spent more time building his house than they did the church building. Uh-huh. All right. Now, 1 Corinthians. Oh, see, we're going to the first. We're going to the New Testament. Yay! Uh -oh. Chapter three, I hope. First Corinthians chapter three, verse sixteen. You know there are church buildings called temples, tabernacles, the house of God, the house of the Lord. I think they're wrong. I think well-known preachers in church history who have had temples and tabernacles, they're wrong, according to the scripture. All right, 1 Corinthians 16, 17. This is the Bible. King James. We're King James. You may not be King James when you're done with me. Oh, we're going to find a Bible that says what I want. Know ye not. 1 Corinthians 6, 3, 16. You know, here's one of those good 316s. Know ye not. Some Christians don't know this. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. There's that cloud. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy. There's the holy place. There's the most holy place. Which temple ye are? You are the temple of God. You are the building of God. Not that building. What do you do when you are in a communist country and you can't have a building? You got to meet underground. 
What are you going to do when you're George Whitfield and you pass through the areas of Connecticut where I live, my hometown, and he went out in fields and factories and groves and there was no building, there was no building that was his. Whitfield would go into a factory, talk to the, the person in charge and say at, at lunchtime, can we meet outside? Can we meet in this facility? And as the people having their lunches, can I preach to them? You are the temple. And if you are the temple of God, you cannot say all are welcome. No. If you're not saved, you're not welcome. You are not the temple of God. You are not of the body of Christ. Chapter 6, verse 19. Chapter 6, verse 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? I got the oracle in me. I got the most holy in me, the Holy Ghost, who's in heaven. I am seated in heavenly places. Which ye have of God, the Holy Spirit, ye are not your own. It's not the wood, the glass, the nails, the cement that is God's. It is the flesh. It is your body, the believer. Not everybody's welcome into the body of Christ. Now, everybody could be welcome into a building. But not everybody's welcome into the bride of Christ. Only those that have believed on Jesus Christ. Only those that have got the, the new birth. Only those that the Holy Spirit dwells in. You are saved. You are in the body of Christ. I was in another church. And we were there for a while. And we're sitting there and later on I found out. This family came from somewhere else. And they were a clique family. The pastor loved them. There was, there was no other family but this family. And he said, anybody in favor of these people? And I, I, I didn't know what was going on. I was not newly saved, but I, I hadn't come to the... And I raised my hand, and the pastor looked at me and said, you're not a member. So I, my, I, me and my wife, I said, we're not going back. And we went to other churches. And went, that guy said I was not a member. Finally, we couldn't find nowhere it went. We met back there, and guys, you know, you fell off the earth. I said, what's this membership thing? Well, you have to be voted in. I said, wait a minute, excuse me, sir. Voted in? Wasn't I put into the body of Jesus Christ when I was saved? Well, yeah, but you have to be voted into our church and many other churches. So I am saved. I get the Holy Spirit that comes and dwells in me doesn't dwell in any unbeliever. I am in the body of Jesus Christ. Now I have to be voted in to this elite churches. That's not scriptural. We'll move on. Chapter 8. Chapter 8, verse 10. For if any man see thee, which has knowledge, sit at the meat in a late in an idol's temple. There is the Christian body with the temple of God. Then there's a temple where you can go and sit and eat. And it's an idol's temple. Do you know some churches that you can go and sit and have fellowship? 1 Corinthians 8.10 Sit at me at the idol's temple. There's churches that have fellowships and fellowships and fellowships. That's not the God's temple. That's the devil's temple and you go and eat. Interesting. 2 Corinthians. It's all King James Bible. 
chapter 6, 2 uh, Corinthians 6, 16. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them, holy place, and walk with them, and I will be their God, and they shall be with be my people. If you are the temple of God, and by the new birth, and by belief on Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have no business to be in idols, whether it be a star, or Christmas tree, or dead people, or yourself, or the pastor, or a particular group of people, or something that is praised and worthy more than God. You have no business. It is wrong to say, we're in the house of the Lord today. We're in the house of God. No. That's wrong. Welcome to the to the Baptist temple, blah, blah, blah. Welcome to the Baptist tabernacle, blah, blah. That's all wrong. That's not correct. That's not sound in biblical doctrine. 